37. She went and bought 37 action figures. In a row? Hey, try not to buy any toys on the way through the parking lot. Hey, hey you, get back here. doing uh we're gonna have a good time tonight we're just gonna talk dollies yeah we're gonna talk some dollies that being said um dan wasn't always gonna be right on time because dan has stuff going on and that's okay because i figured we would hang out just us for a little bit and uh and my dog oh she had surgery yesterday she got her uh her lady parts so yeah, but uh, we're gonna hang out for a couple of minutes, just us, and we're gonna we're gonna talk some housekeeping. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, yeah, M Vargo says first, actually, ma'am, uh, toxic. Oh, are those the are those the little icons? Why can't I see them? I guess I got to be on uh, Facebook to see them. It's new. It's a new experience. I'm kind of we're gonna crawl, walk, run this thing, right? That's how we're gonna do it. But uh, that being said, Kent, Embargo, Media Clash, Gonzo, JMK Custom Works. Speaking of which, hey, what's <laughs> up, everybody? <laughs> Hi, Mikey. Hey, buddy. How are you, my friend? Doing well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I was actually going through a couple of things. So, um, you, then just Jeff, Biff Jocko, love that freaking name. It's a great Curtin name. Stomp, David Roberts, Mython the Python, the Death Skull. Um, Death Skull. Death Skull. Thank you all Death very much for the um, for the memberships. Um, I know people have been asking for this, and I, I was kind of on the fence about it and then you know and then i thought about things that some people had said to me about you know just being supportive and wanting to see that that kind of those perks and content and stuff so i did it i did it well done i guess it depends on uh what your definition of the word is is, is. what's this mikey Oh, is there a what live show with Dan tonight? Oh, oh, is there a live show with Dan tonight? Oh, I, I, I didn't know. You didn't know? Of course, I knew every. The whole world knew. You know everything. <laughs> well, okay. You know <laughs> everything. The weeds now. And then Eric asks, "Chad got a membership. Nice. I did. Of course. Um, you know, while we're while we're hanging out." Um, we're just chewing the fat, shooting the breeze. 
jaw jacking before uh, Dan gets here and we talk about volumes 14 and 15. I got that sucker. Way to go. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. David Andrews says, uh, too funny about Dolly Master, guys. Um, you know what? Let's have some. Yeah, let's have some fun because I'm, I'm tired, tired of stupid. Uh, I'm I'm all full up on stupid right now. So I, I still I still have a job. I've been at capacity for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I can't. Yeah. This is this is work now. This is work for you. <laughs> no, this is not work. If this ever became work, right? This is this is fun. This is enjoyable. This is something. Oh, but, but it takes effort. It takes effort. You can you can love your job for once for once in your life. You can say that. Hey, I loved being in the infantry. I love. Sure, that. you didn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you didn't mind that. No. Uh, Tony Horton says hello, everybody. Hope all is well with you all. Hi, Tony. Hi. What a great time to be a collector. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. No matter what it is. And then same time toys says, so this is how we're doing it now. As opposed to what? <laughs> it's like We've evolved. Mm -hmm. Chad has evolved. Hey, same time. Are you talking about the memberships? Cause it's, that's totally separate, man. Like people don't need to be members. No. For, for fun Dolly time talk. Mm -hmm. we don't, yeah. We don't, we don't need to do that. And then uh, some dude was stalking you, Mikey, apparently. A creep. Strauko, what's up, dude? Good to see you. And then David Roberts said, super cool about the memberships. Thanks. Appreciate that. Not Top Goon. What is up, dude? Hey. Goon, was, Goon was streaming. And uh, I was making a little something to eat before uh, I, I came in here and got ready to rock. And, it, and I get into his stream, and he's just going off on this thing and then like after about 40 seconds i realized like oh he's ranting about rise of cobra <laughs> just like oh, hey, hey, motorcycles and they got a they got a jeep in the middle of the street with missiles <laughs> on it and he's just going off yeah it was pretty funny and then uh I'll apparently he says i took his viewers and i'm a menace i'm sorry uh it wasn't intentional my friend not at all um but of course not. you know I can't not go live when I'm scheduled to go live, even though I I would have thoroughly enjoyed just hanging out, watching you go off some more. But um, I, I had somewhere to be, and I'm sorry. Kent says, what's up? So, um, yeah. Robert's Infinite Realms is here. Good to see you. Gonzo. 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 Plastic Mercenary says, sup, y'all. Sup. Sup. That's a good-looking picture. That's yep. Um, Oogalooish. Yep. James Lucas, solo brother number one, says, What's good, brethren? Um, mm. you hanging out here with us? That's that's good. <laughs> 37 in a row. In a row? <laughs> I'm gonna have to redo that audio because it's not like excited enough. I'm I am I can I just say I am so glad that you took that idea and ran with it because I thought it was really, really good. <laughs> I told you I was gonna. <laughs> you did it. You did it. You wasted no time on that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then Mython says, I am now a Dolly Master. Yes, you are. You That's are awesome. Yeah, you are. You go. <laughs> Not every girl will bring you lasagna at work. There it is. That's clerks right there, baby. Yeah. Right. Uh, Deskull says replay squad tonight, chilling with the family. Have a good night. Thanks for being here though. Deskull. We appreciate it very much. Priorities, my man. Yep. Yep. Priorities. And then everybody's saying hi to the dog. What's good chaff. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, is that, you know, we, chaff, we went to a store and this woman's like, Oh, can I get Can I get a name for the order? I think it was Chick-fil-A. And I was like, Chad. And she's like, Huh? And I was like Chad, C H A D, Chad, <laughs> like four letters. You know what I mean? Three consonants and a vowel. It's real easy. And then she gives me my little ticket, and I go over to the table with the ma'am, and I set it down, and it says Chack. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So every once in a while, when she's trying to get my attention because I'm, you know, half deaf, uh, she goes, "Hey, Chack." I'm like, "What the?" F yeah. Pretty fun. Joe fan 84 is here. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, 
HGC is heralding the coming of the president. Good evening. Good evening. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I got to be honest. I enjoyed that, actually. What's, up? What's good, homie? Saying, you, you gotta, what's up? You got to give the people what they want. You know what I mean? You do. Uh, and then Biff is going to rejoin the replay squad. Have a good show. Thank you, Biff. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Jeff W. with the $2 super chat right off the bat. Thank you so much, Jeff. It says, Chad. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, Jeff. I uh, hope you're doing great. I'm doing well. I hope you are as well. Um, Not as good as that mullet, though. What's this? What's what? I don't know. It, 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 it is what it is. It's Michael. I'm going to pinch you. Jack. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Am Vargo. One of my favorite wrenches says YouTube is my number one form of entertainment. So if I can spend a few dollars to help some friends and produce great content, why not? That guy. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I agree. Cause I'd be a hypocrite. He's I do. I do the exact same. Yeah. What'd you say? He's a pillar of this community. Vargo. Yeah. 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 I think he's yeah. got some rad stuff. <laughs> Northern nomads calling people suckers. What's up, Ooh, suckers? Like My thought says maybe one day I'll be cool enough to get a Chad wrench to add to my toolbox alongside the laser pants wrench. Are you a mod for laser pants? Laser pants. My thought? Sounds Are you a mod for free POA? Oh, Lord. Uh, Jason, what's up? Good to see you. Thanks for being here. And Zazel, all the way from Australia. Good to see you, my friend. Hey, good day. Skyfall. Ken from Toy Connections is here. And what's up? Uh, Bear 11, Charlie, always good to see you. Steven, Vincent, 396. I always look forward to this. Life. You know, so do I, because um, it's fun. And you guys are what make it fun, not not me. High quality entertainment. Mikey makes it fun, and you well, guys all make it fun. The guests make it fun. That Mikey's, Mikey's more like a co-host, right? You, I mean, we're just going to call it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's always what I, I just, you know, I always wanted the Ed McMahon position. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I am with Jay. I just go, you yeah. are correct, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct, sir, yes. <laughs> Benny well, Torres, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, and Mython and the missus got a pizza. Mm. Yeah. Mm, from where? The good pie? Mm? I, I don't know. Uh, Michael Kimmel says, what's up, Joe? People stick and move, poke and prod, and jab beyond reason. Mm -hmm. wow. Sharp stick. Right. Dag, man. Yeah, yeah. Terry's here. What's up, TJC? Good to see you. Thanks for being here. What's up, dude? Larry, Tony's figs. Chad and Mikey, what up? Dan's late, huh? That slacker. No, but it, he, he had stuff going on. It's all good. Um, we got to squeeze into his schedule. That's Ken's that's toy trick. says I'm late. We got to start over. Right. We'll just, we'll just edit that out. And then we'll just say, hey, welcome to the show. Jay Wood says, good day from the great white north. Good to see you, Jay. Thanks for being here. What's up? Curse of Fenrir. Mikey, Russian ninjas, really? I laughed so hard when I saw that. We talk, we talking about this? this yeah. Business? I, Hell I yeah. So. Krasny ninja for the win, dog. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I first saw that, I, I remember I, I put something up in my story, and I was like, everyone needs a Kami ninja. Everyone. Go get your Kami ninja. ninja is best ninja, yes. Um do 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 Dan. Hey. Hi Dan. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Um we're just getting through a little bit of uh housekeeping real quick. Tiger of Kai is here. What's up? Good to see you. And a two dollar super chat from my good friend Ryan that says, Hey Chad, you're some kind of <laughs> that's, that's that's what i heard yeah apparently that's uh that's what the, somebody from joe fest called me oh yeah jedi dan 2112 says new viewer here fan of the creating joe books well there there he there, there he is right there yeah thank you there, jedi dan it's good to see you uh, Redfin says, what's up, champs? Good to see you all. Looking forward to listening in on this one and on and on and on and on. 
Tony Spook says, Dan, live from Chandler, Arizona. You just got outed, and now that's, that's – He's in Arizona, too. He's in Levine, so there you go. He got outed, too. Yeah. <laughs> Double <laughs> dogs. Double dogs. I'm, I'm in Albuquerque. New He's all right. We're all – it's going to be in the 90s tomorrow, so we're good. Cool. Uh, and then Laser Pants sends another Super Chat. Thank you, Ryan, because we, we just trade Super Chats. Like, all we're doing is paying YouTube. Also, I'm breaking some classified news on 3POA tonight. You know what? That reminds me. Thank you, Ryan, for the housekeeping. Uh, even though I posted it that we're we're back to back tonight. So tonight at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, all of you make sure you go over to 3POA podcast and hang out with Ryan and uh, our good friend, Quentin J. Bedwell. Okay. Anyway, let me get to this super quick Now that uh, now that Dan's here. So I wanted to show everybody who's kind of hanging out what uh, what's what's going down, and uh, I'm sure we all know what this is. But um, window, it's a window. Thanks, Mikey. It's a window. I'm gonna mute you. Got you. I'm gonna. Why don't you put? Why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you put? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> he can add himself right back. Is that how you want it? Like that? Oh yeah. You can do that too, Mikey. Just drag. Oh, I forget I have extra privileges. You do. You have all the privileges. Oh, it's Sam, not Quentin. Oh, okay. So Laser Pants has uh Sam Newsman on tonight. And then you can have me on too, Laser Pants, if you want. Ooh. Anyway, um have him on. So over here, uh there's there's two tabs at the very end. There's two new tabs on my YouTube channel, and then there's membership. And membership shows all the stuff that you get with a membership to the channel. And that's, um, there's different tiers and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But look, Mikey, I updated my store and now it's linked to my YouTube channel. And guess what else is on there? Where is it? Ooh, that's a good one. I finally put up the never go full classified. That's, that's a good one. Finally put it up. Is a, yeah. Is that a pen dragon? That is a pen dragon. Yep. So all, all well these done, merch sir. designs were from uh pen dragon designs. Uh, my good friend Chad LaForce. So, yeah. I don't see a make toys great again. Sure. We again. yeah, we we don't have that one yet. He's actually redoing okay. the intro. He's oh, redoing right. my intro. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll work on that. Um Laser Pants says I have G.I. Joe classified breaking news, not Sam Newsman. Yeah, you have set. Anyway. So real quick, I just wanted, there, there's the Never Go Full Classified that people have been asking, and it's finally up. Um, for members, once I let that kind of simmer for a little bit, because I, I just did both of those today, I changed my store, so now my store is linked under all my videos. Um, and I did the memberships because people were asking once I let that linger for a few more days, I'm going to do a members discount code for any merch. And, uh, mm. I will make that discount as significant as I can. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's the, there's the levels. So <clears throat> I did the, I like stuff, which is uh member shout outs, of course, members only live stream. Um, Members only chat, which is in the community tab. Only members can see it. And then members only polls as well. And then uh, the Dolly Master one is a monthly members join live stream. So anybody who is a Dolly Master level can join me on live streams once a month. Uh, and then content and topic suggestions. So, you know, people say, oh, you should do a video on this or you should do this or that. And like, so I can keep track of those suggestions. I put them all in there. Giving the, the people same. a voice. The same with customs, yeah, because it, it gives people the opportunity to, you know, help help shape some shit. So, yeah, that's them. So, well done. So, I was busy I'm today. Reading all the comments. Are you reading comments? I was trying to, but thank you everybody who's said kind words so far. So, well, like this, I don't, one I don't have the ag I don't have the access to the chat back. So. Oh, yeah, like Embargo said, uh, can't wait for volume 14 and 15. I love going through the other 13 volumes. Has been my bedtime reading lately. Puts them to sleep is what he's saying, which is, uh, hey, that's cool. <laughs> no, it's relaxing. It's a I'm joking. Yeah. It is. Hopefully it's 
I don't know. I, I am interested because I always find out from people, or it's always interesting when you have conversations with some people, I'm not saying anybody here, but mm. um, whether they read them or not, because sometimes they'll like, they'll sometimes bring up something and I'm like, that, that was in the book. And I'm like, did you read the book? And like, well, I just kind of flipped through the pages. I'm like, it's, okay, it's in enough, the book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I know a lot of, even, I mean, I'm talking, even Hasbro guys I've talked to. Uh, there's funny because I'm like, did you read the book? And like, no, I just flipped through it. At least they're honest. Um, yeah. But which is totally cool. But I know, you know, I know then and there's others who I know who read it very carefully. A couple typos picked up here and there. Um, so I'm going to show this, to Dan, since you posted this, I just snagged this from your post. Who did that? Um, so this is I one of the vehicles that you highlight. And uh, it's the man of war, obviously designed around the um, Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a super awesome vehicle. Yeah, and Drew Haggerty supplied me that bottom photo um, from the um, style guide because I'd never seen that. So he brought that up recently. So the revamp the page. color study or the, the test of the vehicle? The bottom right there. Oh, okay. So our right, I should say. Uh, so um the colors and stuff like that because i'd never seen that so it's interesting to see that it still looked very much so like the rolling thunder down there so yeah um, but yeah um mike joseph says uh i have busy days in the life of a retiree <laughs> <laughs> i'm supposed to be He's finishing that to yet <laughs> I'm no i'm kind of not i'm supposed to be finishing that freaking custom uss flag mast video and i i got a little sidetracked so yeah, that's a cool piece. Um, someone had came across that from someone helped him. Uh, I actually got it into a collector's hands at one point years and years ago, but pretty big piece. I took it to Joe Con 16 or 17, I think, and then someone bought it at the show. So uh, very cool piece. You know, it'd be a cool piece to see function if we could have it function, but that's it's right. a big piece. Big piece. So removable turret, the Man of War was able to house several figures. Well, yeah, of course. Two sliding stations that were housed into the drum section of the vehicle. I try to capture it because, again, I don't own it. And so a lot of the photos were taking. Um, there's a gentleman that lived in the Rhode Island area back like 14, 15, that uh, was able to go to the person that had this in hand and take photos of stuff for me so he took some photos of the different things so so this was supposed to come out in 93 um just before the the gi joe 30th anniversary salute so it's designed in 93 probably would have been slotted for 94. okay um i have paperwork actually let me see if it says on here um i have a couple memos that i'll share out um I shared in the book, which let's see. Let's see if it's listed in here. Jay Bartlett, what's up, brother? Good to see you. What's up, buddy? So I don't know if it says it on this sheet, but I have a sheet somewhere that talks about this and the Inceptor. So, I mean, they got pretty far in the process of yeah. not just being conceptualized, but um, to the point where they're on, you know, I'm trying to remember if they have a SKU number or not. But um, let's see if it's here. Uh, yeah, so G.I. Joe Man Award with figure. It was going to be, so this is the 1994 G.I. Joe Battle Plan. Um, so it's going to come out third quarter of 1994. Um, so here, let me do this. There we go. <laughs> see, see what I see. Is it not allowing? There you go. Yeah, it's coming. So, 1994 GI Battle Plan. So, you can kind of see what was coming. So, GI Joe Man of War, 4199 would have been uh, retail price, I believe. Um, and then you well, can Ghost see Striker we got. <laughs> so, another <laughs> so Interceptor, which is another vehicle I'll feature. Uh, mm -hmm. The armor tech, I believe, is 
I think they're labeled armor tech, but I think those were the power fighters, those ones that were um, featured in the one catalog that were like shadowed out. So you couldn't really oh, see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Manimals, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff on this sheet and then some savage stuff. And then, of course, Hall of Fame and then 30th anniversary. So you can kind of see that these that they got pretty far you know as far as uh in the process itself so gotcha yeah um, so I, I just want to say hey to lurch and to uh pericles for just jumping in uh thanks for coming guys what's up y'all so where is the easiest place to pull up the index for volume 14 and 15. if you go to kickstarter Go to Kickstarter, the, the campaign page. I did make an update. So um, for number 15, especially, um, again, a lot of this stuff was so early in the concept stage that they didn't really have names. So right. um, I reached out to Kirk Zigian and was like, hey, you want to have some fun? And so we went through some. You know, Kirk, my best yeah. friend. Uh, nice Kirk. So if it didn't already have a name, we we kept, we worked together. He came up with some names, and then I came up with some names just for the heck of it, just to have a name. So I did add. Um, there's a, a tank that was created in '86. So for that page on Kickstarter, it'll be pretty recent. I just added like two more things at the very end, which one I called Dredge, and the like, the other one's ca I called Crank. So essentially the crank that is going to feature a tank concept from a 3D mech tech group. So this is a group that did a lot of the mechanisms that just try to play around with cool things. And so the one gentleman that created that, um, you know, I had got some pictures and stuff of that. So you can kind of see it's a mauler body, but the mechanism on top was like a Gatling gun almost thing that you cranked and it was supposed to fire missiles and stuff like that. So it's not oh, artwork. But it'll be actually featuring a model of that piece. So, gotcha. But yeah, if you go to Kickstarter, you should. Do you need me to find it, or do you have the link? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm getting in there. But you know how it is, okay. like the two-factor authentication. Then I'm getting codes to my oh. phone and blah, 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 blah. That's that bullshit. It's the security. Van, when can we expect leather-bound copies of these, like an old encyclopedia set? Yeah. Chad said he's going to be um, paying for that someday. Uh, he's going to offer that. It sounds like Chad. He's a giver. He's a giver. Mm -hmm. A lot of people I don't am. realize that about him. He's going to create a stretch goal. goal. <laughs> he's going to create a stretch goal, and he's going to offer a leather bound. You know um, what's funny? Course. We were talking about stretch goals <laughs> last night, you and I. Mm -hmm. You want to? Test, testing this out since I didn't want to come on and get embarrassed because my video or uh, audio wasn't working. But, uh, yes. Um, yeah, so I'm still working. He's great whatever um so one of the things i'm working on is the stretch goal for the um slip case i know that's a, a want for a lot of people um it's a big significant difference when it comes to cost between a collapsible one and then one is that actually you know glued and bound and like a harder thicker board so mm -hmm. i am going to my printer tomorrow because for those of you who bought maybe the first four uh, i did do a slip case back then um the company that i was working with unfortunately you know only does like a certain minimum quantity it's pretty high so what i ended up doing was uh these days um so the slipcase i had is it's a little bit thicker walled i didn't love the bottom of it but it's thicker walled so my printer i gave him a, a sample of one last week and so he's like hey we built another mock-up using maybe a thicker wall so we'll see how that looks and we'll see how that prices out but like I said, it's a significant jump in price from a collapsible one to, um, I don't know what you would call the other one where it's like a board and it's pre-built essentially. So yeah, I, like I did that. find a box for, I think both. Um, what's funny is the one that's not collapsible probably will be easier to ship now that I'm learning um, the box size I have and everything I got from uh, Uline yesterday to sample package it. Right. And then... The flat one, I was looking at one box, like a pizza box. So I'm like, I got to figure out logistics of how to put the books in there without it 
sliding all over the place. So I have yeah. some ideas, but so yeah, I'm still working on that. Um, the closer we get to the goal, the, the better too, because, you know, I don't, I'm hoping to have an answer by later this week, if not early next week, like here's a stretch goal. This is what we need to do. I'm trying to keep cost of shipping down. So yeah. the, the size box, I'm trying to take that in, into a factor. Um, the materials to pack it well and make sure it's secure also has to come into place. So there's a lot of different factors I'm not used to because I don't generally do a slipcase that I have right. to play into. And, and then the cost of the actual slipcase itself. So there's a lot of things that have come into play that to figure out the, the uh, stretch goal value and stuff like that. But we'll see. So, so fingers, uh, fingers we, crossed. Right. Uh, here we can see the pledge. So you're at uh, 27,000 and change of 36,000, mm -hmm. right? And then there'll be a stretch goal. We're kind of already talking about it. And you know what? Um, I just want to say hi to Nico Tronis real quick. Thanks for being here. And um, I got to throw up the banner. The banner's got stuff in there. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, where yeah. do we find the. Go down. Go. Yep. Keep going down. And I mean, another stretch goal. If I mean, if things go really Whatever. well, I had contemplated doing. Um, for a long time, I've tried to produce something like that was done at Hascon and even what Carson had done recently with some of the package art and stuff like that. So that's another thing I would recently talked to, to them about potentially getting approval on. And then in addition to that, probably not likely, but just like I did in Night Force cards, I had contemplated doing the some of the Battle Corps Rangers. So like Dr. Mindbender, and yeah. the frostbite and the duke and baroness but again i know the slip case is what people want so that's kind of where i put my attention to and the focus so i doubt the other ones will come out but who knows you never know never yeah. say never but yeah so that's volume 14. So yeah let's um let, let's take a look at this real quick so uh same time toys has got to go good to see you thanks for being here anyway uh world made a cardboard thanks for being here and uh jeremy Welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, Embargo says, man, Battlecore Rangers cards would be awesome, too. I would love them. Yeah. I have the artwork. I would just have to do the card back. I mean, right. just adjust the card back accordingly. So, All right. So everything in volume 14 and 15 is unproduced. We're just like, I'm just going to restate that for anyone who may have just kind of slid in here, yeah. which to me... That's always been the thing that I look forward to the most with the other 13 volumes is it's really cool to see how the design of the rolling thunder changed or the, you know, this or that, or the thunderclap or other vehicles and how they came about. But then when I get to the back of the book and I always find something that I've never seen before and Mikey and, and Jay Bartlett and I, we did a whole live stream on just unproduced Joe stuff. And you're you're giving us tons of content. So, <laughs> um, all right. So we have the Arctic Commandos, mm -hmm. and that was is a very similar playset to the Dino Hunter. So it's right. going to come with a polar bear instead. And they so they I, had Arctic repainted vehicles in there too. Yeah. Yeah, the Mudbuster, Locust, and one. That's of the right, lines. the freaking Locust. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Low cost. That gotta do another low cost yeah so <laughs> but yeah I so know. i have the i'm featuring the package art or what the package art would have looked like um primarily on that page and so um locust oh, and the, the, the phantom xs tank you, you mean so that is yes this thing? <laughs> that is that thing, you mean that thing? <laughs> but there are some differences so i actually have the model for that that i'll show you some of the differences Right, so and you have, and I were talking about the interior. Yeah. yeah. So the interior is primarily where the change went because of the size of Savage. So the one, the model I have actually has the seats. So I did take some close-up uh, photos of that so people can see like what it was intended to look like. Hey, I'm going to um, let you guys talk for a second. I'll be right back. You keep gonna, keep trucking, Mike. I'm going to stare at you. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so, yeah, so that's what the uh, Phantom Tank is. Go ahead, Mike. What there else? 
Well, yeah, I mean, my, I my favorite's obviously the interceptor, but that's that's yes. because of my father. <laughs> yes. So uh, the interceptor is cool. Um, I'll be featuring the painted model of that, uh, as well as the figure that was supposed to come with that. So I don't know if many oh, know really? what figures supposed to come with that. So, I mean, the figure's not painted to the specs, but I have it's a great it's a red tag. So nobody really knows. Like I've asked a couple of Hasbro guys. Like we've heard green tags. I've seen two red tags in my you know experience as a collector, um, but they think it may have been like from the model shop or something like used in the model shop. Um, but oh, okay. yeah, it it says product, and then it says one figure assortment, and then it says do not remove, and then it has the figure there. I'll let you guys be surprised on who it is. Uh, any guesses, Mikey? Uh I, I don't have it. I don't okay. have um, but stuff, I featured... stuff that I think would be cool would be like, you know, probably older stuff and they'd be wanting to use the, the later figures to repaint. So Yeah, so it's a later figure, but um, as long again, as it's, it's not a Cobra it version didn't of abandon iPod. anybody. <laughs> no. Uh, no, it's that, not, it's not I, I apologize, but but when the ma'am calls due to the nature of what she does, I will answer it. Absolutely. You know, don't worry. We were just talking about you. Um, I, mean, I could rewatch it. It's fine. It's but fine. Uh, don't rewatch it. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I'll show some early concept models that a fellow collector had shared as well, um, and then uh, a hard copy of the like the painted one, but in the normal you know teal green hard copy color. Um, so, and then uh, also, uh, I was fortunate enough. It is very hard, but when I got. Um, I got a, like a box of slides or transparencies, I should say, recently mm -hmm. from somebody to scan. And they had a little negative in there. So I was able to pull this negative. And with their assistance, which is Dave Kunitz, he helped me kind of clean it up a little bit to where I can actually feature the artwork for it as well. Because the negative oh. was pretty bad shape. So we had a an angle around in Photoshop to get this thing to look good. But it looks So what you're easy. saying is Thrasher helped you out. Thrasher helped me out as, as well as Ozone. <laughs> as well as Ozone. Good. Uh, I think Skynet's going nuts in your background there, Dan. <laughs> What's that? Oh, the that's beeping? Skynet. Yeah. How do you hear it? Oh, that's it's my all good. Um, What's <laughs> the Enforcer? The Enforcer. Um, how do you describe it? Let me see. Let me pull it up here. Oh, that's near in volume 15. Okay. I'm like, wait a minute. And by the way, everybody, for just to let everybody know, my thought was never to do two more books. It was gen it was genuinely one book. Mm -hmm. Um, but people know me. I just started cranking pages out. Just all right, let's just see where this goes. And then once I got to a certain point, I'm like, oh geez, like there's enough here for two books. So I know I asked the community, like, do you want two books, one book? Uh, even though it'd be a little bit cheaper to do one book, the consensus was people wanted two books. So that's what I went in that in that route or that direction. Um, oh, wait, where is it? Enforcers in which one? 14. 14. So it is in 14. Okay. Yeah. British Let's SAS, see. Israeli, Hayseed, Uproot. Okay. Lotus. So yeah, the Enforcer... Um, so it's actually, so kind of what it reads is it's has similar attributes to the Cadillac Gage's Commando Scout. Mm. So Frank Coronius worked on that. Um, he actually worked in, um, in his background because he had a military design vehicle background originally. Nice. Um, so he kind of pulled from real world uh, military vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar to that. It has giant missiles on the back that would have lifted up you know, almost like scud missiles i think if, oh, I'm, thinking, if I'm thinking correctly but cool. um but yeah and then the pest is the you guys may have maybe somewhat familiar with it it's also called the vulture so okay. that would have been battle Corps rangers yep little helicopter looked like a fang yeah kind of that thing. Yeah. yeah almost like an avro car kind of design well it reminds me of the fang that came out in 2002 i think i put that in here 2002 the cobra fang 3 it resembles that a little bit right honestly so um, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just say I have some detailed call out sheets there, a Polaroid, and then a commercial screenshot or a promo screenshot of that vehicle. So 
awesome. I just look at all this stuff like ATF, X-18, Scrambler, Cobra Overshadow, Hercules, Typhoon, Crab, Trax. It's just like... So these are all these very movies. early concepts. Uh, Jeff? The, yeah. I think $25, I want to say, for U.S. surfing, if I'm correct. That's actually pretty good. That's a lot of books. So, yeah, it's all 15. And so, again, if we do the, the it, well, the uh, slipcase would be just accounted for with the um, stretch goal. So, here's another question um, from Kiwi GI Joe Customs Can we get these books in New Zealand? You can if it's not on there, because Kickstarter is really weird when it comes to the state or like countries, I should say. So what I do is I've gone to the countries I know where people have purchased in the past. And so I do figure out their exact total. And then I was able to select this time, which I didn't see in the past. Like I just say everywhere else in the world, it's this price because I just don't know. So if you uh, if you could ping me on Facebook or email me through the website, I can add New Zealand on there and I'll get like an accurate price quote. So it hopefully would be less than everywhere else in the world. $70 and quote. All of Dan's links are in the description of the video. So I made sure that I, I put it all in there, even the Kickstarter link itself. So you guys can one-stop shop at all. If you have questions for Dan, or you just want to go poking around prices, books, back these books uh, by all means. And then if anyone has any other questions for Dan, just shout them out. I'll, I'll throw them up. So whatever you want to know, that's, that's why he's hanging out with me and Mikey here. Hell yeah. uh, and I'll say this, you know, I never really went through each book and counted how many pages, you know, well, not how many pages, but how many pieces of art. So I was just bored the other day on a Saturday. I'm like, all right, let me see how many are in some of these. So each book, just artwork, not counting models, not counting two ups and stuff like that, that I feature. I mean, it's approximately close to 150, 200, just pieces of art throughout each book. Yeah. So it's a lot of artwork, a lot of preliminary artwork, never meant to be seen um out in the public so it's really a way to honor these guys um next thursday i'll be having i'm gonna we we're talking about this last night a facebook live uh with some of the creators so that should be interesting to see we've done some private sessions together and it's a lot of fun so we'll see how it is <clears throat> once people are involved and asking questions and stuff but i'm looking forward to that um chad and i were playing last night with Streamyard on how to figure out because i'm limited to three people with Facebook. So I think I found a way to. I was in a robe. <laughs> oh my. It was, it was scary. Uh, I thank was goodness. Mind. Thank goodness he did not open the robe. Out here, yeah. So, hey, no you didn't say it was closed. It was closed. Thank thank, thank goodness. Oh, okay. Um, Look, this, this isn't that bad. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, like, I'm, you know, come on. I, I do pretty good for myself. Man, uh, I, that's want... better than his private calls to me. There's, there's no room. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say thank you to Kent. Uh, Kent gifted five channel memberships. Thank you so much, Kent. And I I'll just try. caught that. I'm an asshole. I'm sorry. Again, crawl, walk, run. I'm still learning this. But thank you, Kent. Thank you so much. Yeah. Still trying to figure this out. Ooh, Dan, you got questions. From Mython to Python. Dan, if you bring the first book. Yes. And oh, me, right. myself, and a lot of others. So um, for DFW, I'm going to be shipping books there. Um, my goal is to have some of the creators sign yeah. maybe an They'll entire. Just like that. There you go. So I'll sign them, of course. But I'm going to be trying bucks. to get some of the uh, designers and creators and marketers who worked on the brand to sign copies as well. So. Um, it should be fun. I have, I don't have any of my newer ones, um, but I have volume one and two from way back when, you Ooh. know, when it was under the, the 3.75 inch that I have a couple of those signed by a lot of different people, but I'm planning on when I, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Rhode Island this summer, I think. And I'm going to take a couple books and, you know, I don't know if they'll sign them for everybody, but I'm going to try to at least get one a set just for my or at least one book signed up for myself but. you know what that raises another question um will 14 and 15 be shipped out to backers before dfw and or joe fest uh the goal is yes 
Um, the slipcase is going to be the collar because I have no idea the, uh, yeah. the production of that. So right now, books are in, in Hasbro or the books. The pages are in Hasbro's you know, possession to kind of look at and review and give me feedback and all that jazz. Lawyers, lawyers, lawyers. lawyers. No, they've actually been really good. So Hasbro's been a very good partner to work with. And so I'll probably hear back within two weeks from them, which is normal. Um, once it funds, those of you who fund it, who've supported in the past know me. Yeah. I get I get started on the preliminary stuff the moment it funds. So I don't wait to the last day. So if this gets funded in a week and I have Hasbro's blessing with it, then I'm already working on a mock-up so I could do my final review of the printed version with my printer. Yeah. And then, I mean, I've literally gone to print the day the Kickstarter ends in the past. Yeah, so, I, I have to say, uh, like anyone who's never backed a creating G.I. Joe uh, Kickstarter before, you will be amazed how fast you get your book. As soon as it funds, like, they just show up. Like, it's fast. Super fast. I mean, there's a period. Yeah, they print, and then they, because everything is cellophane, that takes yeah. a little bit of time. You know, it takes another week or so. So by the time the funds share over from Kickstarter fully, I'm usually shipping at that point. So yeah. um, I don't know how long a slipcase. I mean, it probably depends on the type of slipcase. So that's the only thing I could see is a delay. But I would still hope before, what, June 20, when is it, 22nd? I would hope that I'd be shipping out before then. Yeah. So um, Ace from Ramen Toy is here. Ace, thanks for coming. And he says, hello, Chad and Chat and the two gentlemen on the panel. So. Yeah. Thanks, Ace. Good to see you. Uh, Jeff W. sends a $2 super chat. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, and says, Dan, I just backed awesome. the all in and I can't wait. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Got a package out here. I think I saw another question earlier. Yeah, there's other questions. Um, just Jeff, question for Dan. I'm sorry if this has been answered. I'm making dinner and I'm not paying attention to whatever you three idiots are saying. Uh, where does the artwork come from? Are you creating it or is it from a source or from archives? P.S. I'm not paying attention since I'm making dinner and you guys are boring. I read just one idiot, so I'll let him clarify who that is. Um, as, far as, <laughs> as far as the artwork, um, I'm not creating it. Um, I do the layouts of the books, and I do the written part of the books. Um, a lot of the material, as far as the written, comes from interviews that I've had with former members of the Joe team, um, ranging anywhere from marketers, designers, engineers, model makers, People who work toy fair. I mean, this that's another thing I'll be sharing out is additional stuff with the process, which we can talk about later. Yep. But um, as far as the and, I, and then I also have internal memos that you just saw. Well, maybe you didn't see, but I showed an internal memo earlier. So I do have internal memos that I pull information from um, artwork. Majority of it, um, I either there's a collector at one point who had a huge collection of stuff that I paid for a photographer to shoot his collection at the time. So I have all those that imagery. I have stuff that I own, and I also have stuff that's been contributed um, from other collectors as well. And then some of the stuff is pulled from Hasbro's archives as well. That is fortunate enough to help out with Hascon and saw a lot of this stuff. So um, yeah, so it's kind of a mix. It's, a, it's an array, and you know, um, I appreciate everybody who's helped out and who's been able to support and supply designs over the years and and really honor the the team because that's what it's about i mean i understand um they don't have to but i do appreciate them doing that so that way people um we can showcase their artwork and get them the appreciation they deserve <laughs> and then jeff follows up and says hey chad cut me some slack i'm irish and i'm cooking pasta there you go these things are complicated bippity boppity boppity boo uh, as a fellow Irishman, I may have to agree to this, Chad. So, uh, I, I don't know. We streamed on St. Patrick's Day, and I was letting it fly. So, Whatever. yeah, and the whole chat was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Every one uh, of them was sauced up. <laughs> Jay Mack is here and says, "What it do, nephew? Good to see you, Jay. Thanks for being here." And then uh, A is for Apple has a question for Mikey. 
Does anyone here like stuff? I don't like stuff. Stuff gives me heartburn. I like stuff. Speaking of which, I just relaunched that shirt on a new store. What? Yeah. Um, Ken's Toys is asking, are there back issues available? Yes. So my website, creatinggijoe.com, you can get previous volumes if you don't want to go all in. Um, oh, look it. I've already got it right there. Weird. That's weird. That's weird. Strange. Anyway, but yes, back issues know. are available right there. Um, there's also the Night Force sample that you'll see right in front of you, uh, which we could talk about later if you want to. But yes, to answer your question, the back issues are there. Um, for those people, I've had a couple of people who are going into 14, 15, maybe miss like 12 or maybe miss 13. Um, what I'll probably do is at the very end during the survey, I'll ask if there's anything else you want to add on to it. And I'll just communicate. It's not that many generally. So I'll just communicate privately with you and we'll work out like, hey, what's the additional cost? And then you just PayPal it to my uh, Steel City Publishing and stuff. So. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Ace from Ramen says it's nice to get Hasbro's backing. Yeah, like I said, they've been great to work with. Um, you know, the people I do work directly with, there's been a couple of different people, but they've always been helpful, you know, um, you know, very minor things to change, you know, yeah. it has to do more with like just a couple of copyright stuff. But other than that, they've really have supported the books in that sense. Um, you know, the gentleman I used to work there, he unfortunately got um, let go. Um, he's a great assistance, yeah. you know, throughout the negotiation process and all that. So, um, yeah. Can't say anything bad about that relationship with them. And everybody hanging out here, if you haven't seen Dan's YouTube channel, go check out the freaking Toy Files podcast on YouTube because he does this whole deep dive into the unproduced uh, Battle Core Rangers line for 1995, and it's freaking awesome. He shows, like, um, what, what were those clips that was... Uh, so it's a promotional video. So I do. And I did show in the line or whatever. Yeah, I did screen share, screen grab some of that for the book, mm -hmm. you know, as well. But yeah, so it's uh, there's a couple. Of, so the, the toy files includes interviews with some of the former members of the team. Um, you know, the, the challenge because I used to have a different po podcast. Then I started that one during COVID. You know, we did I think three interviews. Co uh, uh, Kirk was again was uh, co-hosting with me at the time. Um, just have had time, you know, producing, I don't know how many, I think seven books now in two years. It just, yeah. I haven't had time. So my goal is, uh, once, well, now that this is done is to really start getting that going again. And I've talked to a lot of the former members as well. So I think it's going to be a mixture. And I talk about this in the book, but it's gonna be a mixture of personal interviews and then group interviews. Cause the group interviews. That's one thing I did different this time was in the past, I've usually just interviewed people individually. So I talked to Ron Rudad about his designs and Mark and, you know, Kurt, and then I talked to the marker, you know, whoever. Right. Well, this time, like, you know what, there's all these unproduced concepts. Let's just see what everybody has to say. You know, why didn't they go anywhere? And so I'll tell you the couple of meetings we had were so much fun. Some of these guys hadn't seen each other for 30 years. Yeah. So it was so much fun seeing them get on and, and laughing and some of the stories they have, um, some of which we're going to hopefully share out at uh, DFW and in June. So uh, that's one of the things we're working towards, kind of creating a panel, maybe on sharing some of those stories. Um, right. But <clears throat> yeah, so lots of lots of fun with these guys. So Mython said he just subbed to uh, Toy Files. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And um Plastic Mercenary says unproduced Night Force low light. That would have been cool. Yeah, it, and it wasn't just low light either. There were several. Yeah, just, uh, Rumbler and um, Backstop. So, and Blaster. yeah. That, re so, that repainted blaster is. Yeah, wow, I agree. Cool. That yeah. is really good. So those are available. So what those are. Yeah. Um, like just look at that. <laughs> I came across a memo that talked about four unproduced characters, or any four unproduced Night Force characters. I had the figure source sheets to match the coloring. So 
I actually feature customs that was done by a, fought, a former model maker or model painter, I guess, at Hasbro. So she did the customs years ago. There's also a vehicle. Um, but Adam Rich has helped out with this. He, you know, these are existing art that he changed to make them look like force colors. And then he actually painted the other ones. If you roll over that, uh, he painted the Rumbler and uh, backstop on his own, like from by hand. So very impressed with his work. And, um, you know, so these were offered to last Kickstarter uh, as a stretch goal. Well, actually, one of them was. The other one didn't make it, but I did offer it for sale afterwards. Yep. So I did put these up on my website. Uh, they are available. And if you, um, you know, purchase 1415, again, when the survey comes out, if you're interested in getting these, I'll ship these in the books. So I, I you know, it doesn't really add cost to the shipping, luckily. So yeah, show them things. <laughs> And the cardstock, it feels very much like I took an original card back to my printer and they were able to pretty much get it on, um, pretty much get it on to where the thickness is about the same as a vintage carded figure. They're, they're perfect. Like I, I knew that they would be because of the, the single Zartan card back that you had sent mm -hmm. out in the previous issue, but these yeah, are phenomenal. So the Zartan is a different printer, but yeah, I was very happy with the Night Force. Do you have the Zartan or no in front of you? I do. He's right here. And Zartan's a little thinner. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because so Zartan was yeah, never so single carded in the US. Yeah. And it's a little bit more challenge. That printer I had a little bit more issues with. But, um, you know, you've seen a lot of custom Zartans out there, but the wording's not exactly the way it was going to be. And that's literally pulled up from a mock-up that I have. That wording's on there right there. See where my finger is? There it is. Paranoid schizophrenic. Yeah. <clears throat> um, there was something else I was going to pull. Uh, Mikey, do you want to, do you want to shout out what you just put in the private chat? <laughs> Yeah, in, in front of in front of everyone here, I went all in. Let's back this project. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Nice. Um here's right, a question see. for you, Dan. Yes. Will you be making any more unproduced card backs? Um, again, the focus has been just on the slipcase now. Um potentially. If I can down the road, even if it's after the Kickstarter, I'd have to get Hasbro's permission. But um, yeah, I would love to do um, not only uh, the Battlecore Rangers, um, but it'd be fun to do some other characters. You know, one of the characters I would have loved is the Stealth Fighter from a previous volume I shared. It's a oh, yeah. concept. Um, but again, yep. you know, I had to, you know, fund it and because. That would have to be customized. That had to be painted like Adam did here from scratch. Right. Yeah. Um, and, but, and that's something that Hollownet said. He's like Adam Riches from that other <laughs> toy podcast. The Adam Riches. Yeah, I guess. What other toy? Can we get a Bushmaster? Bushmaster. Oh, the vehicle. I'm sure Frank will build that for you. Come to DFW. Um, Adam Riches goes I'll be on. <laughs> um, he goes on. I think full force kind of regularly. I, I, don't, oh. I don't know. I mean, I, I, Adam's done a lot of the collector's club stuff. Great yeah, he guy, did a like lot of the, a, the awesome con stuff. He did Shockwave. He did a whole bunch of them. Plus, he yeah. did Classified Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, yeah, he did. Adam does a bunch yeah, of. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff for Hasbro. So it was easy to get that approval because he had done so much work for them. Yeah. And so, like I said, we, he and I talked about doing Battlecore Ranger cards. I mean, really, I would just have his. I need. I would need his help, maybe with the, the, uh, the background and stuff. <laughs> like you know, uh, but um, out of boy, out of boy. <laughs> but yes, there could be a possibility. Oh, I gotta. I'm sorry. I gotta do it. I I know it's a little behind, but I gotta do it. Uh, hit it. Hit it. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, they're they're what make everything fun. Uh, Mython the Python. So, 
Uh, Dan, I know you saw his post on Instagram. Yeah. Where he tagged you about it. And Mython said, I couldn't wait for the all in. I wanted the first 13 to dig into now, but I backed 14 and 15 and I'm interested in the slip cover. Awesome. I appreciate your support. What, what about Bushmaster and Skypig? <laughs> <laughs> Old Skypig. <laughs> oh, I freaking love it. Um, now, Mike, have you done any customs from any of the books? Um, no, I have not. <clears throat> there are several that I want to do, um, especially after Chad and Jay and I's show we did about them. I really, really want to. I have got to get through some stuff before I start on first. Well, well but, no, because I've always yeah, interested there's... in seeing customs, you know, because I mean, they're like the color study. So for anybody who doesn't know what a color study is, it's essentially, you know, the design would be created. They make Xerox copies and then they just do different colors to try to figure out, you know, what color do we like best for this character? I'm so working on this. Are you? Nice. And I'm working on. So the Vipers would be a cool one, I think. You this. Know nice yeah so those are two that i'm working on i already got uh right because uh, i do additive and subtractive customs i don't do 3d printing because it, just because i i can't design the files but um yeah for I am, those coming I to dfw we have something exciting i can't remember if we did we share that out before i can't remember we did I yeah when yeah, you yeah, and okay. greg and ron rudat were on yeah so we have a workshop we're going to be doing with you know we've always seen custom classes on figures Mm -hmm. so i thought it'd be kind of cool to do something with vehicles yeah. and so uh these guys are excited you know and so we're working out the details and all that stuff but it'll be limited to, i think 30 people i think is what greg said for equipment and space and stuff but essentially these guys will be heading up a workshop really coming around helping you kit bash you know whatever you want to do so right. i am potentially going to be doing it as well or working with um someone on a vehicle I'll, I'll share it out when it's done but um it's an existing vehicle but it's originally planned to be something else let's just say that right and so i don't think it'll be too hard of a custom to do but i figured what better person than to have the designer themselves help with so it. theoretically since i am a master vehicle and playset customizer and i have a press pass can i walk around and judge people like with my eyes just judge them. We're gonna do that anyway. <laughs> Be judging people all weekend. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, no hitting on people who come to that event, please. Hitting? Uh, on? What do you mean? <clears throat> oh, you mean yeah. like? No hitting on like with your googly eyes. No, uh, I no. <laughs> on my wife. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can talk to Greg about that one, walking around and critiquing people. But no, it'll be fun um, to kind of allow these guys to be involved in stuff yeah it'll be red uh here's a question Alan is asking battle core rangers was that after mega marines yep. so battle core rangers has an interesting history uh some of the characters are pulled from mega marines some of the characters were pulled from the another assortment from battle core um just a normal battle core yep. so there's been a lot of you know speculation and stuff like that but some of the memos i have kind of, you know, clarify some of that stuff. Um, like the one character that's labeled as Frostbite, I don't have any set proof it's Frostbite, but I labeled it Frostbite because of just the conversations I've had. But originally it was barbecue, you know? Um, so there was a couple of Mega Marines that went over to, to Battle Corps Rangers. There's a couple like that Baroness, um, Sure Shot, which is labeled as New Joe, oh. and then um footloose um were all meant to be part of battle core and yeah battle and then core um hawk and steeler too because uh, hawk was gonna come it it's it's in that video hawk was gonna come with this oh total before, combat hawk yes yeah the before it got repurposed yeah, it for sergeant savage and steeler was gonna come with the stealth tank yeah it was a stealer and I, th I think it's hit and run that's going to come with the stealth is a hit repainted hit and run but that's going to come with the stealer whatever it probably was but. well sure shot was in the video sure shot was the guy driving in the video well yeah i remember they talked about sure shot but he he was in the jeep with the net the net launcher that was sure um, shot. 
I don't know, I don't worry about watching. It's all good. Doesn't matter. But yeah, Battle Corps Rangers was the 95 line that got yeah, canned yeah, and yeah. half of it got repurposed to Sergeant Slaughter and some of it yeah. went away and sort of savage, yeah. We so, would have got that new killer whale. Yeah. So the yeah. Sea Wolf is in there, the battle platform's in there. The Sea uh, Wolf's on the cover, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't the Sea Wolf on the cover? Uh it's on oh, the wait. Kickstarter. I'm on the wrong page. The Sea Wolf is. I mean, I do a montage of everything. Yep, there it, there it is. So I do a montage on the cover of stuff. So there's Duke. Um, the alternate just, Cobra logo. Alternate Cobra logo. So a few weeks oh, back, I uh, interceptor. Very cool. Love that. So so there's some new artwork that came to me about two weeks ago. So I had to redesign. I think close to fifteen to twenty pages. Mm -hmm. um because i wanted to make sure i included this artwork so scanned it all reworked the pages so these pages were one page some of them were one pages and so now they became two pages so a lot of stuff on replicators ninja commandos uh and then also uh some artwork that i didn't have for battle rangers so yeah uh absorb viz is here good to see you thanks for being here and then kent Thank you again, Kent, for gifting those um, channel memberships. Says, I have to go. Uh, we'll catch the rest later. Keep up the great work. And uh, we will. Thank you very much, man. Thanks, Kent. Thanks for being here. Uh, here's another really good question. Brad Davenport asks, how long did it take to collect all this information for the books? Um, it's a been an ongoing uh, time frame, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, the project itself, I, I conceptualized after an interview Ron Ruda had given, I think in 08, 09, uh, really didn't produce. I mean, I had to, I, I had to go reach out to these guys and get their buy-in, right? Um, it didn't make sense to do a book if they're not bought into it and, and willing to give some insight. So, um, yeah. cause the original book, I was going to feature my private collection. So carded stuff and box stuff. And they just interviewed the guys on that. <clears throat> But I learned very early on, like I was asking Ron some questions. Ron's like, well, and I knew this, I think in the back of my head, he's like, well, I didn't do the package art. And I'm like, yeah. I know. But I was like asking about certain aspects, like what are all the dog tags and blood? And eh. you know, it's like, well, I didn't do the package art. And then I started, you know, people started sharing um, some of the concept art and then it just grew from there. And like I said, I, when I was on volume seven or eight, I was like, oh, maybe I'll be, I can maybe get to 10, maybe 11 books. And then someone came across, they thought they had lost a lot of their artwork. Right. Well, fortunately, they had a CD-ROM, if anybody knows what those are. And they actually, huh? their hard drive crashed. So they had CD-ROMs with all this. So that was provided. And then, like I said, even as, just as of you know, two weeks ago, new artwork there. And then about a month and a half ago, somebody came across a bunch of slides that I scanned like high res as much as I could and some cool vehicles there. There's one cool vehicle called the overshadow is what we came up with and mm. it's pretty dang cool. So you guys will get to check that out. Um, but information, it's just been an ongoing process to be honest with you and Brad. So you learn new things all the time and uh, the memos and stuff like that I've had for a couple of years. But one thing I did on purpose when I was making the books, up till number 13. I try not to read all the memos ahead of time because I wanted to be, I wanted to keep that excitement alive. Right. So when I was working on the number 12 or number 13, I would look for the memos featuring of the characters that are going to be featured or vehicles in there. So that way it was still fresh and new to me and exciting. So I wasn't getting ahead of myself. Um, reading all this information, you know, and then just being bored with it essentially. So, um, I don't know if anybody's heard of the alternate heads from 1990 or from 1983, but it was all because of a memo I had yeah. very early on that I discovered that there was a third alternate head. I knew the other two had been already uncovered by D class, but the third one was all due to this memo. And fortunately, you know, one of the guys had carted samples of it. And since then they popped up here and there, but that's kind of a cool find like that. I, you know, I feel very, um, proud to be able to get that information out to the community so yeah yeah and very cool that's the stuff that kind of makes 
this series, you know, it, it, it makes it stand apart from everything else because it, you know, we have order of battle, this, and we have this, we have that, we have Carson's omnibus, but creating GI Joe really goes into like, this is where we first came up with the idea for this vehicle. And this is where we started designing it. And then this is once, you know, another department got a hold of it. And this is what finally came out of the mix. And it's cool to just see it go from original design to, you know, on store shelves and the process that it goes through. Um, Alex is here all the way from Costa Rica. Alex, thanks for being here. Uh, never apologize for being late because at least you're here. And that's, that's what counts, man. At least you're here. And speaking of someone who loves to deep dive into GI Joe and other properties, Jesse from JLS comics is here and he says CD ROM space night. You bet. From there is a character Rom. named CD ROM that's part of the X Soldiers or Super Force. Well, and then there's ROM Space Knight too. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. But, so, uh, double entendre, right? No, no. Um, amalgamation of excellence. Mikey, I think you need to read this in your old man voice. My CD ROMs are sitting next to my bad luck video collection. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then uh, our good friend been Renee from Discs. What'd you say? It could have been worse. They could have been on floppy yeah, disks. Put it in and close the door, right? Yeah, roughly, you know, like 300 of them. Yes. <laughs> Danae from Tough Nerd Toys is here. Thanks for being here, Danae. It's good to see you. Hey. What would you say, Dan? Um, it's probably a broad question, but uh, I'll just keep it to volumes 14 and 15. Yeah. What was the thing that just blew your mind the most during your research? Hmm. For fourteen, fifteen, I'd say it's probably some of the the uh, recent art that the Ninja Commandos I'd never seen ever. So some of this other stuff I've seen, like replicator art, I've seen on Yojo years ago. It's blurry as can be, but it's there. Um, and as well as um, you know, some of the Ninja or the Battle Corps Ranger stuff, you know, I've seen over the years. But yeah, um, the really the thing that blew my mind recently were the uh ninja commandos original like pencil sketches and stuff like that and then also um um that one vehicle like i said the overshadow is just really cool to see it and then hear the background of it and like oh dang that would have been really cool would have been really expensive but it would have been really cool um so yeah i mean it's you know I, i'm just thinking recently you know i mean over the years, anytime I would come across a new piece of art or something that I've never seen, it's always exciting. You know, you always get excited. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. So I'm going to miss some of that, you know, because it does, again, rejuvenate you. And, you know, when I'm in book mode, it just helps kind of drive you. Just keep going, keep going, keep going and share. So, um, but yeah, there's some really cool, like I said, um, Things that I, you know, I've had for years. So as of recent is the Ninja Commandos. But anytime I saw like new images of either the Manimals or um, just original concepts over the years, like oh, here's what you know, Mutton Junk Air we're going to be, you know, looking like or whatever the case is. Right. Um, it's been a lot of fun. So speaking of people that does deep dives into <clears throat> toy history, Tony from Analog Toys is here. Thanks for being here, Tony. You ever you ever watch his stuff on like like Palatoy or like Action Man, any of that stuff, Action Force? Uh, I think I watched a couple, you know, in the past, but it's been a minute. Like I said, when I go in book mode, I'm not, I try not to get distracted because what will happen is I start watching the podcast and then I'm not working on the book. Right. So, right. And a lot of times I just put music on and yeah. just work the music. Yeah. But now I'll have much more time on my hands. So I will probably be checking out a lot more. Yeah, def definitely check out Analog Toys because cool. his, the the toy history, the stuff that he goes into, like chronicling and cataloging, and especially the there's like a several part series all about the original Palatoy Action Force, like talking about Bob Reek and how it came about. The one on Red Shadows where he really dives into the Robo Skull is amazing, cool. right? Because you know Nightmare Tie Fighter, right? Yeah. Um, I did have another question for you from Mython because he always has good questions. 
Dan, have you ever worked with Mark Belomo on anything? Uh, both loving dollies and writing books. Um, not directly. Um, Mark and I talked, I remember um, 2013-ish. Um, I was able to get into Comic-Con with, uh, with Dave Dorman's help. Uh, and so those of you who don't know, Dave Dorman's a illustrator, very known, more than well-known probably for his Star Wars work than Joe, but he did a lot of the presentation art for Joe. And mm -hmm. so he was kind enough to get me in there, introduced me to some people at IDW at the time, because I was trying to get the publisher to back the book. And, um, you know, I remember calling Mark afterwards and like, hey, they, you know, I had a pitch book and took it. And he's like, well, that's a good sign. That's a good sign if they're willing to take your pitch book. So we've talked here and there over the years, but I know he's been busy with a lot of his own stuff. So, uh, but never worked anything in collaboration form or anything like that. So, um, you know, myself and then occasionally my dad will help clean up some artwork and stuff. And then, you know, um, Kirk was again, helps with the editing and stuff. So it's a lot what of it's just that way. What did he write? He wrote like the foreword or something on one of these. Kirk. Yeah. He, he, so he, he wrote the, uh, on my Facebook and said, I wrote something for one of these two volumes. But he's written stuff before. He did the first, so the first four, the history of GI Joe. He, really? um, he the history of GI Joe. So the first four, so every volume. So I guess I can explain this. First four volumes cover the the history of GI Joe, which Kirk wrote, and then I put together. Right. Yeah. From there on out, I walk people through the process of how Joes were made back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I go through the design process, the sculpting process in detail, right. the model shop, the tooling process, um, marketing process, as far as how they, you know, why they didn't make the decisions they did. And then this last book I'll be talking about, I think it's on the um, table of contents there, but commercials, I'll briefly talk a little bit about commercials, um, show some storyboards and stuff like that, which are really neat. Um, and then I also talk about toy fair itself like actual yeah. toy fair and then toy fair catalog so i interviewed a couple of people regarding that uh so some fun stuff there and then i think that's it so that's the one difference between four all the other volumes and volume 15. volume 15 doesn't really have written content i do my normal preface introduction and then i just jump into it with artwork so that's um true. yeah because i mean if uh 14 kind of finished up the wrapped it up you know the bow as far as the field testing that they would do so they would initially they used to do uh, surveys the parents and so there i have surveys from back in the 80s where they'd send it back give their remarks talk about the toys and it's about the first assortment so it's really cool to read that yeah um so i kind of wrap it up with that and because i really there's really nothing else that I mean, I can get into the comics and all that, but really, as far as the toy process, based on what I've been told and what I know, I cover it all. So, right, that's where people have been very, very helpful. I'm grateful for all the support that these guys and gals have hit, given me because, you know, I would not only write it, but I would have them edit it. So to make sure, like, hey, am I accurately describing the tooling process, or am I accurately describing the sculpture process to make sure you know, things that I'm not that familiar with were accurate. Right. So, it's, so it's not a misspeak or. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that, and that is always fun with Kirk because Kirk would come back and be like, there's things I learned in here that I didn't, there's things in here I didn't even know. And I learned. So if you can teach, you know, if someone like him who was involved so heavily in Joe can learn something. That's, did he, you know, um, that's fun. Did he think. red pen the shit out of you at any point? Oh, yeah, he's it. That's all right. I, I expect it. Not as of late. Not as, saying, like Kirk and the red pen, right? I love it's it. Just, I it. love the red pen. I mean, you're going no, all the way back to like 1981, right? Just for yeah. consistency's sake. Yeah, he just yeah. covers the page in red pen. But he, uh, he would print them out. Like I would send them to where he could print them out, and then he would take photos of them, and, and I'd see red pen and all that. But that's in the last two, though, or the last couple, he hasn't really had much editing. Uh, so I, I must have gotten better with my own editing, apparently. Nice. Uh, so but now, let me uh let maybe me maybe he'll sign his book real. in red pen yeah that's what i was just thinking he better bring that red pen to be pretty funny yeah it'd be pretty funny be cool mikey read this real deep 
and then read this? That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. There's no way around it, right? Yeah. Hey, the chat. Uh, the Jim chat Argo's here. What's up, Jim? Good to see you. Thanks for being here, buddy. And um, so I have a question for people. Okay. And then so, you have other questions waiting for you, too. Okay. What are you looking at the table of contents? I mean, I know volume 15, you're probably like, okay, well, I don't know who the heck some of these things are, but what are they most excited about out of these next two books? Mikey? Um, for me actually the stuff that i've never even heard of is definitely the most exciting for me like that especially when you're when you're getting into like stuff that harks back to palatoy names like british sas and stuff i i i am dying to know what the hell that is all about well there's there's others in there that were yeah there's 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 a handful in there that are a couple in there yeah, I so am very much looking forward to figuring 15. out what what that is. There's Jammer in there, and yeah, Jammer's yeah, in there. Cavalry series, what the hell is that? I got my uh, yeah, got an Argent Stone, that. huh? That got reused. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. You got a Brendan Fraser figure. I mean, he was just barely doing stuff at this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's awesome stuff in there. Uh, I agree with Mikey. It's just learning a little more right lifelong learning finding out something else that you never knew existed that at some point maybe in an alternate world you could have been playing with this toy you know like um when you talk with kirk about the cobra island playset and how much he was like in love with that playset mm-hmm. and he was like oh and we designed it like this and it was going to flip open and like Every time you hear Kirk talk about that playset, he just lights up. So both of these volumes are just chock full of everything that I look forward to with every new volume in your series, like finding that one vehicle or that one character design or figure or, you know, new design of an existing character that I never knew was out there. Or an alternate Cobra logo concept. Mm, Yeah, that's in there too. Is there anything uh, to Penny? I told I told Chad last night some things I'm going to hold tight to for you guys because I'm always I always like I always want people to get it for the first time when they get the book. But um, oh yeah yeah anything yeah. specific you would like to see? You know I can maybe share out a page. Mikey, that's tough, dude. There's just there's so much like there's there's an entire column here of stuff i am just dying to know why don't you think on that and i'll hit a couple of these questions for dan okay cool okay um brad's asking question for dan was there a specific design where the designer was really excited their concept would finally get a chance to be seen by the public um i don't know if there's a specific design um as far as the designers go, I think we've grown um, to be friends. Uh, we've also grown to just, I think they've seen what I've done, and I think they appreciate the fact that I respect what they did. And so I think they just appreciate seeing, and again, this is something you can ask them next week, actually. Um, you know, from from what I gather, they appreciate just being able to see their stuff in paper form. You know, because again, it was always is never meant to be seen, you know, is I did behind the scenes work. I, you know, it got produced and, you know, yeah, the toy made it and that's cool, but you know, some of their concepts and stuff like that um, and all the hard work that they put in never really got seen, you know, all the pencil sketches and all the color studies and people just didn't know all the behind the scenes. And that's where I think um, I try to capture all that. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Mython the Python, Dan, what part of this whole creating G.I. Joe project are you the most proud of? And what is a memorable moment you will cherish the creation of this series? Um, hanging out with me is the answer to the second question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the mm-hmm. first one? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. It's interesting. Um, I'll say Hello. that I'd say, what's it? What's it? What'd you say? Ego. 
shut up, Mikey. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, I'd say the thing I'm most proud of is is kind of what I was just sharing. Uh, the relationships I've been able to establish with these with the people that worked on the brand. Um, you know, that's kind of what I've that's what it's always been about. And I've and I've said that from day one. It's always about recognizing the Joe team because when I read that interview from Ron, it just it just resonated with me like, you know what, this had to be a team effort. It had to be. It just wasn't one person. It wasn't just marketing, it wasn't just design. And so really getting to recognize the team I'm most proud of and the friendships I've built along the way. Um, memorable moments. And again, it's weird because these have probably nothing to do with the actual book. Um, I'd say when I did a reunion back in 2016, um, up in Rhode Island, just seeing all these individuals get together and not, they hadn't seen each other for 30 years yeah. and just knowing and being a fly in the wall, essentially just witnessing all these friendships and all these uh, stories come back alive with them. And then being able to work with Hasbro at, on Hascon for 2017 and then honoring them officially in that manner. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably, you know, one of the most memorable moments, uh, being able to help Daryl, uh, who I was honored to work with, come in. That was a process to really see stuff from pulled from the Hasbro's archives and be responsible for, like, packing them up. You know, when you're two up after two up, you're bubble wrapping and putting into a box. I mean, it's pretty pretty cool thing to do. Um, but as far as the books go, I mean, I'm proud of, I'm proud of the, the work, you know, that, that was put into it. Um, I'm, I'm honored again to be able to showcase stuff that was never really meant to be seen. And as far as memorable moment with the book itself, um, it's hard to say. I mean, it just, I think getting to trust and buy in everybody and that they've entrusted me to share their story and they've entrusted me to feature their, their designs. And also, like I said, stories, cause there's a lot more than just the designs itself. So long winded answer, but sorry. That's an awesome answer though. And, and I have to agree with you. Just the, the fact that those people had the faith, trust and confidence in you to do this. It, it speaks a lot. It really does. Thank you. I don't know why, because you're kind of an a hole, but I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I'm just playing. Um, JLS Comics. Hey, look, none of you in the chat know anything about the private messages between me and Dan. So they're, they're, they're very lovey and supportive. The private messages between you and anybody, really. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, here comes my kitty. Uh, Jesse from JLS Comics is asking, is there anything you've researched that you haven't been able to track down and find? That's a good question. Hmm. There's a couple concepts. It wasn't that I couldn't track down and find. They just were never made. Um, so there's a couple of concepts that recently I'd seen in a memo, talked to Vinny DeLeva about, shared out some information. They just never made it off paper, essentially. Um there there are i'm going to be featuring them uh i leave with them camo force so there's an exclusive that's going to be we for a retailer camo force yeah. yeah so i'll let you guys read what what company but um <clears throat> i didn't find too much so i have figure source sheets for them and i have a memo that mentions them it's very little information um and i have uh hand-painted models that it's my it's, it's i'm guessing so it's probably one of the only things i had to like kind of guess on but because of the the characters that they used because essentially the camo force were going to be redecoed figures from 82 so i'll give that away and so the the models i have they were using 82 figures they're in camo just like the figure source sheet it just didn't give me like i mean they never made it to production so i didn't see like actual colors um oh. So that'd be probably one of the hardest things as far as really connecting the dots. But um, there's some artwork. I mean, I guess if you want to talk about that, um, I feature almost every figure, I believe. I think there's only like, I think Undertow I didn't have anything for. And I think he maybe, and then maybe um, I didn't have any like, I think Sergeant Savage is, or not Sergeant Savage, Sergeant Slaughter's Marauders. I don't think I featured them. There just wasn't really anything on them because they're just repaints. 
but just regular open stock character i think i feature everybody except maybe a couple from 94 like countdown i think one other character from 94 just because they're repaints essentially there's right. really nothing on them yeah. um vehicle wise you know there's a couple of vehicles i never came across stuff like transportable paddle platform never saw any preliminary art um a couple other things i the terror drum i haven't seen but i may have seen the presentation art for that someone recently came across a collector we can't we haven't been able to confirm whether it's the actual presentation art for it or not um hmm. but yeah so that's the only thing i guess i've been bummed about just not able to track down some of the original art for some vehicles um or anything on like undertow like i'd love to see undertow's presentation art because i know dorman did it I, i've seen a pencil of it uh which i didn't realize i had even until i think after 13 was done so it's too late to really do much with it but yeah Awesome. Uh, James Lucas is asking, Dan, is there any specific unproduced item that you personally wish had been made? Ugh, and you narrow call. it down to one. Yeah, that's like... <laughs> uh... <clears throat> one is all you get. Vehicle or figure? <laughs> I'll give say... you one of each. We'll give you one of each. Stealth fighter for figure. I think that Ooh, guy would have been yeah. cool. Yeah. Um vehicle i'm trying to see I'm trying to think of all the unproduced vehicles um there's this one I'm trying to think what it is called i featured again i features a lot of unproduced stuff in earlier volumes but yeah um the bushmaster is actually pretty cool the like remote control looking picture of it so that is actually a pretty cool looking vehicle um I'm trying to think of all the different vehicles that I've come across over the years. Um, so we'll go with that. We'll go with those two. The Revengers would have been really neat too, um, to kind of battle out the Rolling Thunder. But um, all of it, we should all have made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of stuff. Well, granted, You've only shown me some stuff from volumes 14 and 15, and I know I'm going to dive into it like everybody else, but of all the unproduced stuff that I've seen so far, there's not a lot of it where I look at it and go, yeah, I can see why they didn't make that. There's not a lot at all. And yeah. it, you know, when I look at stuff like the, the Nomad and all these other vehicles in the previous issues, and I'm like, man, that thing was rad. How come we didn't get that? I want that. We'll be talking a little bit about that. I mean, again, I, I feature what I feature in the book, but at DFW, we're going to talk about that. We're going to have a panel talking about unproduced concepts and stuff. So I think, yeah. get, I think those guys are going to probably expand a little bit further, not with a conceptualization, right. but with like why maybe, you know, it didn't go forward. Yeah. And I mean, and I know some stuff is known like the train, right? Yeah. Like, like the train, it literally just cost itself out of existence, yeah. you know, yeah. because it just got worse and worse and worse. And they were like, no. Yeah. I mean, cost is a constant factor. Yeah. Right. Um, J Mac has a question for me, me, uh, Chad, is there one main thing you are still looking for in GI Joe? Love from the community. He just no. wants your love, guys. No, no. Um, that's a hard question. How hard is it? I, I want to say nothing because I have everything I want from 82 to 94, a real American hero from most of the stuff that I want right now is Palatoy Action Force stuff. And Scuba Pete and several other people during NEC this past weekend in the UK were working on that for me. So I don't know what the end result of that looks like, but most of it is Palatoy stuff, the triad fighter stuff like that. That's hard to get on the U S side, but not so hard to find in the UK. So I'm right now I'm working on international stuff and then like weird fun school repaints of like, the Sergeant Savage Jeep and that funky maroon orangish yellow color. Yes, you know, Savage Mikey. Grizzly. Come on, you knew I was gonna yeah, go get it. Savage Grizzly. You knew I was gonna get it. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Uh, and then 
Rick D's, what's up, Rick? Says, mm -hmm. I just hopped on. Is Joe Fest ending after this year? Doesn't anyone know why Ed said he was he he was talking some crap? Who the hell knows? He's not talking about Joe Fest, but he yeah, I I'm I'm just gonna add, answer your first part. Is Joe Fest ending after this year? No, there's been no announcement of that. Um imagine his his wackadoo post was not about Joe Fest. Thanks, Rick. Mython the Python sends a two dollar super chat. Thank you, Mython. It says, "Hey, Chad, much love, mother sucker." Like that? Yes, like that. Exactly. And then Mython sends another super chat, five dollars. Thank you, Mython. Says Dan, you need to watch the live Chad spoke of earlier. You'll never look at Bushmaster. <laughs> He'll never look at any of us the same. I think I did like watch twelve year old. I think I watched some of it, but then again, that's when I like I said I be watching it and get distracted yeah so yeah it gets it. a little it gets a little so that one got a little hairy i figured you're gonna go there maybe yeah. i won't watch it <laughs> don't watch. All right. yeah yeah um figmonger what is up says sorry i'm super late to the party just finished a 12 um 12 hour oh, shift or it, like a like, 12 pack it is. Yeah. I, that's what i saw it's a 12 pack that's boy cool. polished off half a case <laughs> yeah yeah i love it steven were there any unproduced mail aways that you know of uh, that's a good question it's good it is a good question uh the only thing that i came across uh was rocky gonna be a mail away I don't know if Rocky was gonna be a mail away. I was trying to feature Rocky, but him in the fridge, we were, I was unable to get approval for. Um, but now, was that from their people? No, nah, it's just, just in general. I, I, yeah, in general, I don't, I don't know. I don't know whose people said what. I just know I wasn't able to feature them. Interesting. Gotcha. Um, so unfortunately, because I have some really cool Polaroids. Um, trying to get some dirt here, Dan. Of the fridge that himself, like. For the sculpture sheet as some actual like pictures of them which is really cool because uh, cool. i tried to reach out to them i tried to reach out to stallone and all that but um yeah i don't know so it, it, that's out of my realm let's just say um mail aways not that i'm aware of other than the uh, timber that i wrote about in volume 13. it is my thought see there you go chad didn't read it um if you um <laughs> <laughs> I read it. there's a memo sure. that that kind of mentions timber almost as though he was going to be a mail away so my thought is 82 snake eyes is out 83 whatever you want whatever version 82 83 version of snake eyes is out cartoon is out cartoon features timber now they're like okay well maybe we could do this mail away of this this animal to go along with, you know, to kind of match the cartoon. Cause they did use the cartoon animation cell when they were designing Timber. Yep. So that definitely came through uh, first. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the only mail away I can think of that was a potentially canceled mail away, but it, we then eventually did get it just an open stock character with Snake Eyes 85, of course. Rad. Uh, Figmonger said 12 hour <laughs> shift to clarify. I mean, you can you can drink a twelve and come hang out. That's cool. That's, that's totally fine. Give me a. You want to say hi? Who say hi? Let's go, Sally. She wants snacks. She's a snacking dog, man. Um, I had something else. I had something else. Oh, so the answer. Um, since we're at about the hour forty minute mark right now, Dan. The crab. And the chick. Those are the two answers. If you? if you can show both, that would be great. If not, eh, it's cool. But that that's what um that's what they want. That's what they want to see. Gotta give the people that's what they want. That's right. So the crab. And while you're working on that, Brad's asking, Chad, of all the real American hero vehicles that modern figures do not. Hi, what are you doing? Hi. We're well, gonna get a bonus. Because they're do both. not fit in. What is the one that you really wish they did? Um, man, that's a that's a 
that's a tough question. Hello, Callie. You know, I would honestly say the Mobat because I can fit modern Joes into the Mauler. Now, granted, you, you have to pick and choose which modern figures because like a modern Lady J will fit in the Mauler, no problem. But like a modern Sergeant Sa or Sergeant Slaughter is not going to fit, period. So it, it depends on the, the buck itself. Um, but when I put modern figures in a Mobat, they, they stick like from mid thigh up. They are hanging out of the tank and they look really bad in a Mobat. Everything else is kind of okay. Like even the ring neck, which is like, you know, dark ears. And I don't, I don't really have problems with the rest of them. But yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Good question, though. Thanks, Brad. I appreciate it. Okay, let me get back to where we are and blow. Ooh. There's a crab. <clears throat> and then we came up with the tracks for that other vehicle. Uh, see, everybody wants oh. crabs. <laughs> and then there's the chick. And then Another verdict. <clears throat> I featured Lotus Steel in a prior volume, but I felt like she should be featured again. So uh, because there's different artwork, yeah, the volume. So um, she's actually going to be on the back of volume 15, so the pink edition. Uh, which again, I didn't know what colors to use. I felt like I ran out of colors because I used all these weird colors. So went with the purple and the pink. So she'll be on the back of volume 15. So. And then there's the check. That is rad. Which That's resembles great. a little bit about, if you look at the Sergeant Slaughter Triple T page, Ron did something very similar for the Triple T as well. So I think. And that thing is um, very ATRT-esque from the Clone Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Raw Talk Real Deal says, uh, I'm getting some Ed 209 vibes off that thing. <laughs> you are illegally parked. So there are two pages, or four pages, I should say, there, actually. That's cool. Shark Eyes is asking, see that classified wreckage just leaked? Good to see an obscure character get his due. I did not, but that's that's pretty obscure. That's cool. And then Nico Tronis says, Jim Lee straight ripped that off in Uncanny X-Men's Extinction Agenda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Can I see that crab again? Can you chuck that up one more time? Yeah, let me see. Give him the crab. Give me the crabs, and then Mython says the very, crab very is interesting not uh, choice. Holy shit, way. I want that vehicle. <laughs> and uh, Lilith's here. Good to see you, Lilith, all the way from Australia. Good day. <sighs> Chad, do you have... What the hell is that? Anybody? Hmm. Jesse, what do you... I don't know what we're talking about. Did it share my screen? Something's going on here. I don't know. Wasn't me. There you go. Wreckage with Tiger <laughs> Paw. I freaking called that Tiger Paw. Ooh. Yeah, and then HGC's like, uh, actually, that was 1990. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, that thing is awesome. Is that like a like a recovery? So it says having the ability to plow dirt or snow, build in crane to help move equipment or materials, or an auger to help build trenches for piping or personnel. The crab was also heavily equipped for battle if attacked upon. So, I mean, it just has a bunch of everything. So it's like a core engineer's kind of vehicle. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, horizontal horizontal engineer, combat engineer. And there's another vehicle that I had a picture of, but it looks very similar. It's like, it was like a road, road digger. You know, the things that shoot the um, tar, you know, into the, you know, when they're repaving. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But then, like, I don't know if that was G.I. Joe, so I let that thing out because that's like, there's a couple of things I left out because when it came down to it and asking the team, I'm like, does anybody remember this? 
And they're like, no, that looks more Air Raiders. So I was like, okay, skip. Um, <laughs> there's also a cool concept of... I forget, what they're, I forget what they're called. I don't know. Let's see. Let me see if I can find the name of them real quick. But um, let me see if I can pull this up. Give me two seconds. I don't feature these um, just because I just, there wasn't much on them. So let me see if I can find them. Give me two seconds. <laughs> and then Michael, you know. Is the crab the arm or the leg of Devastator? Back door and window. Back door and window. <laughs> Breaking in your shit, Dan. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm trying to see. I forget what it's called. Is this, this what we're talking about for Extinction Agenda? This thing? Yeah. <laughs> Mikey has to flex. He's like, oh well, let me just let me just grab that issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I pulled I pulled a pulled a Chad there. Did you? Was that a Chad? Yeah, one? I did. Mm. Yeah, that was that was the AI generated minor <laughs> Marvel graphic novels. <laughs> That's all good. Let's see. I think it's in there. There's so many different folders, so I'm just trying to find the right folder to hand this in. I like it. Dan, to go back to one of your, your earlier question to me about mm -hmm. have I done any of the customs, I'm kind of surprised that uh, my dad has not requested me do the, uh, the G.I. Joe uh, rock climber figure. Oh yeah, the he um, may just be trying to figure out which color study that he would want done. Because <laughs> he has the art. Didn't he get the art for that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Alpine mixed with the um, scrap iron, correct? Scrap iron, yeah, with Deep Six's original head, and yeah, yeah. It's a nice kit bash. I mean, it should be like an easier. It is an easier kit bash to do. Hey, um, Mython, I did not see your Exo Squad comment. I'm sorry. Can you repost it? If you don't mind, and then uh, Jesse sent me a message on this. The dog wants to talk. Get up here, speak to everybody. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. What um, you got and, to say, Callie? And then Jay said, "Yeah, Mikey, that was a Chad move. Good job." Here we go. Uh, learning, just like AI. <laughs> yeah. So here's um, it's called Jejo Steel Heroes. Let me see. So, so I didn't feature these. Holland, these that, is, sorry. Holland and Lilith are talking about um, HCC 788, basically saying he's retiring. And Holland, it says, uh, looks like we'll need new Joe channels to step up. Although if you're a real American hero fan, uh, then you have a limited timetable for content. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, hello. So it's interesting. You got Action Force on the side here. Yep. But there's that, and then there's these as well. So I try. I try to remember. I think I asked a couple guys on this, and it's just there wasn't much information that they remembered about it. So I thought it was kind of cool vehicles that they were thinking because I didn't know if they were supposed to be like the little mini ones, but I don't think they were. I think they were supposed to be full size they may have been thinking about doing steel vehicles essentially like tonka almost oh yeah. oh okay so i don't know if that's what they were going with this but because i was thinking, like looking at steel heroes i'm thinking like is that like a kind of a ground version of sky patrol where instead of being chrome they'll just be like like a gun metal all be like a gun metal oh, color yeah I don't, it'll, I don't be, it'll be stainless <clears throat> steel like deloreans Here's a cool piece. So I didn't feature this. I do feature this character in an earlier volume, but I didn't have this at the time. So I'll show you this. It's pretty cool. This is one of my favorite right. characters. That and then Mython says, Chick reminds me of Marsala's Exo Squad E-Frame. So for those of you who have volume one, yeah, there's a character by the name, uh, I named a patch. And so um, he's featured in volume one. 
and I have a, a black and white rendering of them and then the Dave Dorman presentation art for him that never got made. So pretty cool. I also made a custom card back of him. So nice. Tim, Shin, Tim Shin did the artwork for it. I still have those available on my website. So anybody that were interested, uh, it's like a proof sheet I created essentially. It's before the book was officially licensed and stuff. So, um, but pretty cool character. Yeah, oh, that's super cool. I know. Uh, I don't know who it was. I forget. But they made a custom head for him. I bought a few of them. I thought they were pretty cool. So I need eventually. Now that I'm done, I I may try to do some customs myself of stuff. Awesome. Um, with some additional time. So. Uh, v. Conley says, Samantha and I are running rounds for our competition, but I owe everyone punch and pie. Um, you're here. That's all that matters, running around or not. And um, some of the best hair in the business, Drew G, is here. What's up, Drew? Good to see you. What's up, Drew? Uh, Ger Gerard O'Connor. Uh, greetings from the Emerald Isle, everyone. This channel is killing it. Loving the streams and the fur baby only helps. Thank you very much. This is Chad's, favorite. Chad's favorite character. Also, didn't have his artwork when I featured him. <laughs> I, think, I think this is what Chad was wearing last night. It, it kind of resembled that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just That's why he was wearing piece. the robe to cover it up. He Just was not the headpiece. Exactly. Hey, Dan saw my hair. Well, oh. make sure you're specific which hair. Top of your head. Yeah. Yeah. Dan saw me without my hat on. Uh, Michael says, speaking of vehicles, Chad, have you seen the Marauders vehicles? Some of them are sweet. Um, are we talking about the Slaughter's Marauders vehicles? Yes. I absolutely. If, if that's what you're talking about, Michael, if you're talking about something else like Marauder Gunrunners, NBR. which uh, let me know. But if you mean uh, Slaughter's Marauders, yeah, absolutely. Sure do. Oh, he said Gunrunners. What? Mm -hmm. Dude. Michael, if you have me on Facebook or Instagram, shoot me a link or something. And then Jesse's. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't mine. Frank Caroni has designed that one. <laughs> ATVs. Crazy. <laughs> Lou says, I, I'm late to the party. I'll have to watch a replay. What's up? Uh, not much, my friend. Thanks for popping in anyway. Good to see you. I mean, they'll have they'll have a robo skull soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to have to go look at that Marauder Gunrunners, huh? Well, MGRs had they've had ATVs on their site for a long time. They're just like little, like little ATVs. Yeah. Yeah. They've they've had those for a hot minute. Anyway, um, Dan, what um, what else can we tell the fine people hanging out with us tonight uh, before we split? I know that um, I shared I shared the Kickstarter. I'll share mm -hmm. it again, just for anybody who's interested. Please go check it out. Look at all the awesome unproduced two volumes of unproduced GI Joe stuff. From 82 to 94, a wealth of rad, never seen items. If you check out my website, so if you if you're questioning what the book looks like, if you go to the sample pages, Chad, real quick. Yeah. Um, you know, people can see some sample pages I've had up there for a while uh, of previous volumes, so you can mm -hmm. kind of flip through them to kind of see what's in there. Oh yeah, and, like this one. Yeah, like different. You know, preliminaries of Storm Shadow. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to get an idea of what it looks like, again, it, to my knowledge, there's no other book out there like it. Um, you're never going to see this much, you know, artwork uh, shared out in this forum. Um, to my knowledge, again, um, I've been very fortunate, like I said, to have a lot of support from people um, providing a lot of the artwork and stuff like that. So, uh, oh, some yeah. beautiful, beautiful renderings. Um, you know, some of my faves, um, presentation art, some Dave Dorman presentation art's beautiful. Um, Bart Sears does some really cool, awesome looking, uh, presentation art as well. So the hiss, I love that hiss, by the way. Yeah. Uh, these two 
pages or these panels blew me away as as like a hiss guy i freaking loved reading all of this over and over and just like staring at these images it's so awesome how they came about and that's a two-page spread by the way so you know i do offer spreads as prints so i try to do i think 11 by 17 that way you can um put them into you know frame um maybe not the vehicles but especially the figures like Maybe you have a favorite figure. Maybe it's airtight. So you want to get the airtight page so you can have it behind it and then put your figure in front of it or something. Yeah. Um, so those are also available in different tiers. Uh, the more you buy, the less it is per print, of course. Um, as far as an omnibus, um, at this time, probably not. Um, you know, there there are things I haven't been able to show because I just, you know, I already featured them in previous volumes. So again, I'll I'll never say never, but the the likelihood is, you know, probably not. Um, and if anybody's wondering, for the first th thirteen volumes, they lay out they're not in chronological order, eighty two to ninety four. Um, I feature a little bit of everything in every volume as people. That's the brilliance of those volumes, where it's not like oh I have to wait six volumes to get to like my favorite year. You have yeah. smatterings of every year, which is smart. Yeah, well, I mean, it really came down to I, when I did the first book, I didn't know if it was going to be one and done. And so I right. wanted to honor anybody and everybody who worked on it. So, I mean, if I had done chronological, it would have been Ron Rudat at Wayne Luther pretty much for the first three volumes. Right. Um, so I really wanted to feature all the different guys and gals who worked on the brand who at that time had been very helpful, responsive. And so I wanted to honor them. And uh, that way, if it wasn't one and done, at least I did said what I was going to do. And that was at least put out something to honor them. But uh, I've been very fortunate and I've been able to do much more than that. And Hell producing, yeah. Producing these books. So, um, Yeah. And then even Commander Curb Stomp says a box set would be awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, I would love to. I mean, I'd love to feature some of that stuff. But I, one thing I've done, though, throughout the series is if I had it, I shared it. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't hold back stuff, uh, just to steal things that nobody really knew. And I don't, you know, knew, didn't know. So I held back on that, but anything else, if I could feature it, I could, I thought about featuring a couple things, like they weren't unproduced. So like the Raptor and I have uh globulus artwork now and some other characters that were already featured, you know? So, I mean, maybe someday, but at the time, at this moment, I don't foresee that happening with the answer to, but in, again. Uh, Lilith is asking, do you do your own page layout or do you hire a designer? Uh, I did it all. So I had some assistance early on from a former package designer who worked, who lives down here near me. So he pushed me to push the limits a little bit, you know, because I was always working within the lines and stuff. You know, I have a, I have a little bit of background in art. So he pushed me to break out of my comfort zone and, you know, he helped me kind of with the uh, the collage idea and concept initially on the first couple books. So yeah, I I love the page layout of the of the volumes. They're just great. Uh, Samuel Edwards, thank you for becoming a channel member. Uh, for anyone who's hanging out, I launched my channel memberships today. You can go on the YouTube page and look at the different tiers and all the different uh, membership perks that are out there. And we got another super chat from Mython the Python. Uh, five dollars thank you Mython, very much and says thank you dan for indulging us thank you chad for another great live thank you sir thank you president mikey for choosing to have crabs have a great night all the first time i've ever made that choice <laughs> but for you my son happy to do it hey. <laughs> i love it thank you Thank you for indulging all of us with that, Michael. Um, thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for coming, Dan. And uh, so next Thursday, you're streaming on your channel or on Facebook Live? Where is it? Yeah, I think it's Facebook Live. I'm going to probably do it through Stream StreamYard somehow. So I'll figure it out. I'll play around with it this weekend. Because um, I didn't realize Facebook Live was only three people, and I invited like 10 people. So I'm going to have to maybe do the, do the premium version of StreamYard for a moment, do that. And then hopefully maybe I can get my uh, podcast up and running anyway. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, next Thursday. So I have a couple of interviews this week with some other parties. And then 
Um, I'm going to do live next Thursday. So hopefully by then I'll have some answers as far as the slipcase and all that fun and stuff too. So. Awesome. Uh, Jay Mac and Kevin, thank you also for becoming channel members. Um, everyone hanging out knows that I, I struggled with that if I was going to do that. And um, I finally just bit the bullet. So thank you all very much for that support. And um, I will make sure that I put out some good stuff for everybody. Guess I'm the replay squad. Um, you're not the only one who's replay squad, but we yeah, always we like appreciate replay squad. replay squad. Yeah. Like, like replay squad is what keeps this stuff going. Otherwise, everyone's live streams would have like very small numbers of views. Um, and then we got DFW coming up, Dan, and I, I'm sure we're going to talk some more about DFW soon. Yeah. So, yeah, I started working on some stuff this weekend for that. So. Awesome. And then Mikey will be there. Yeah. I'll be that. there. Yes. It'll be fun. It, it should be a good show. The guys are excited to go. I mean, I wish I could invite everybody, but, you know, there's only so much room and budget to go around, of course, for people. Um, but it should be a fun show um, to really celebrate Joe's 60th. So, yeah, that's that's going to be really awesome. Yeah. Uh, Eric says, excellent show. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, Classic Mercenary says, thanks for everything, Dan. Uh, see you when you go through the 330. You know that is? No. A area code. Code. Ohio area code. Oh. Mm. Uh, okay. Re representing there. The OG. The hood. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in the 505, so like whatever i don't know i'm not gonna do gang signs yeah <laughs> i'm not doing gang signs i'm doing number anyway um j mac is asking mikey will you be doing customs what a terrific question uh, I'm, I'm i'm doing customs now I'll, I'm, I'm gonna my goal is to have some there um yeah we'll see <laughs> i'll are definitely you, have some. are you right next to your dad uh not currently no I don't mean now. I mean like at DFW. Are you going to be next to your dad? Yeah, yeah. So I should. Like, I should be by the call sign Longbow me. booth. Yeah. 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 As I'm sure. I'm sure he'll gonna. He's gonna want to go to some panels, and somebody's gonna yeah. have to be there. Is to... Troy coming with him, or just him? No, Troy will be in Augusta. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Splitting up. Good. Yeah. Covering Good. covering multiple fronts. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 And then um, we're we're not gonna have Mister Lacroix. Because he'll be in Augusta. We'll have Jason. Yeah, we'll have Jason. We'll have Jason. We'll have Jason. Jason's red. But you know, you and me and Santa Matt, it's like the trifecta, right? So, I know. I know. Yeah. I'm gonna miss him greatly, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then Lilith says, You did a lovely service to the community. Uh, thank you all for your hard work. Wish you the best for your next project. Thank you. Appreciate that. Awesome, very cool. Um yeah, let's uh, let's let's get out of here. Everybody, go over to three POA and uh, tell Ryan I freaking sent you and uh, yeah, send Up him your some nose money. with a rubber hose. Uh, Dan, thank as you. As is customary, you're signing us out. Don't do that to me. You know, I never know what to say. You don't want to do it. No, I'll follow suit. Mikey. I, 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 yeah, yeah, go, ahead, Mikey. You do. Mikey, it. go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> From me, from Chad, from Dan, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We know you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be with us. We appreciate that about you. So until next time, have an awesome day. Mm.